First, there were books, which you could use to dupe, kick, and even ban individual players. Then we had signs that could ban all players standing near an affected chunk. Then there were furnaces, enchantment tables, and now, boats. That's right, boats are being used as weapons on 2B2T, and today, I'm gonna show you how. It's November again on 2B2T, and pretty much everyone on the server knows what that means. No server November. It's the month where a group of players try literally everything to lag, crash, and cause as much mayhem as possible on 2B2T, and this month is certainly no exception. This time, the No Server November group is using boats specifically as a weapon against new players. So what makes something as harmless as a boat so powerful on 2B2T? What I would think of first is some kind of entity movement exploit, like for instance, Boatfly. It's not exactly a weapon, but a very useful exploit nonetheless. But this exploit actually has nothing to do with speed or travel. So what is it? Well, believe it or not, boats are being used to ban players from the server, and the way it's done is actually really clever. Boats are one of the few entities in the game that you can walk over. And the entity part is really important. This means that the game handles players walking over boats a bit differently than from a typical Minecraft block. And this is where things start to break. Someone realized that if you stack up at least five boats on top of each other and walk on top of them, the server will kick you after a few seconds, presumably the anti-cheat kicking in. But why? Well, apparently, the game thinks you are flying. On a vanilla Minecraft server, if you're in the air for more than a few seconds, the game will kick you for flying. So, for some reason, when a player stands on a stack of more than five boats, the game thinks you're flying even though you're not, and you just end up getting kicked. On a normal Minecraft server, this isn't really a big deal. You can just log back in and jump off the boats. But because there are so many players wanting to get into 2B2T at all hours of the day, the queue can last for hours, especially if you don't have priority queue. So getting kicked is pretty much a death sentence for most players. So this is exactly what the No Server November team took advantage of. They started building so-called banning chambers all around spawn, where there can be over 50 boats stacked up on top of each other surrounded by obsidian. Even if a player logs back in, they'd have to break enough boats in time to not get kicked again. But with that many stacked boats, it usually doesn't end up working out. Unless, of course, the server is lagging really badly, like seen in this clip. So that's just one of the few disadvantages of this design. The other issue is that these banning chambers have to be maintained often. Otherwise, they usually get griefed after a few days. So it's not as permanent as, say, book banning or chunk banning. But even with those disadvantages, the No Server November group has banned over 500 players so far. Plus, any typical new player would join, get kicked, and will probably never try to rejoin again just because the queue is so long. Anyways, I had to test out these banding chambers for myself, so I contacted the group, found one of their chambers, and jumped in. And before I knew it, I was kicked from the server. As long as this tower stays maintained, I won't be able to escape. Well, I guess that's the end of that, at least until this boat tower gets griefed. And like I said earlier, that's probably the biggest flaw with this exploit. It's just not that permanent. But it's still yet another exploit used to wreak havoc on 2B2T. 